Hi everybody, and welcome back to In the Kitchen. And I'm doing good, have another sip of wine. Come to Hudson County Community College for courses that transfer to four-year schools and provide credentials for in-demand careers. They're the newest technologies and facilities anywhere and caring professors and staff to help me succeed. A great education and full campus life. All for a fraction of the cost of most four-year schools. Hudson County Community College. Close to home. Affordable. High quality. Life-changing. Register now. Today, I'm working on a recipe that lots of people have asked about. I taught it at Hudson Community College, the extended education class that I gave there about a month ago. And people have definitely asked about it. Even someone who owns a restaurant say, how do you make barbecue sauce? Barbecue sauce is not hard to make. There are different variations of it. You have Eastern North Carolina, that barbecue sauce is a vinegar-based sauce. Then you have the South Carolina. Now, South Carolina, their base is mustard. Now, the vinegar in the mustard is in this recipe that I'm going to teach you today as well. Now, the Texas, their style, they use in those big grills that you've seen, I'm checking this, the big grills, they use what is called a mop, and they put it into the pail. And what they do, they just would consider mopping the barbecue sauce, and it's not as thick as ours. Okay, I'll be back with a little bit more information, but in the meantime, let's have some wine. And this is Domaine del Riviere, and this is the rose. Okay, let's see what we have here. Mmm, very nice. And my nice little um, stopper to keep it fresh. And you would want to do the same. Let's have a sip of wine. Mmm. That's good. Now, before I tell you a little bit more, the first thing we have to do is saute our onions. The whole recipe consists of a lot of different things. We have vinegar. I have lemon. I'm going to use the juice of a lemon. I have chili sauce, which is, def which is definitely needed. Also, I have paprika, and I have some mustard, and I have some cayenne. Now, the cayenne can just pick it up a little bit, okay? Chopped onion, as I said. Over here, I have brown sugar, a little salt, a little pepper. Now, some of the sauces are based also, and they like using a lot of pepper in theirs. Also, I have some sugar. That's just to sweeten it up a little bit, and Worcestershire sauce, okay? And that will add to it. Also, molasses. I use molasses, and what the molasses does is sweetens it, and if you look at some barbecue sauces, you see that it's dark, and that comes from the molasses but not all of them are. Okay, now back to the barbecue sauce itself. But before I do that, I have a onion here. What you need to do, just put a little oil in your pot and you're gonna take onion and you're gonna add to it. Now you just want the onion to saute. You don't want to try not to let it burn. That will mess up your whole entire pot. You do not need a lot of onion, as you can see. Look, I can make that a little finer. Because at the end of your recipe, you just might want to strain it. And with, when you strain it, you're straining off the onion that's inside of your sauce. So I'm gonna take this. Of course, I forgot some, as usual. I'm back, my bench scraper. Okay, so I'm gonna take this, add it to 
my oil, I'm using olive oil. That's left up to you. You do not have to. This is okay. Let me just straighten this up a little bit because sometimes it can get a little messy in here. You know how that is. Okay, now I want to make sure that this is stirred a little because like I said, you do not want your onions to burn. Oh yeah, you just want them just a little translucent this flame. flame. The heat on this is not up too high, so that should be good. Now, going back to the different types of barbecue sauces. Now, I already mentioned that you have the Texas, you have South Carolina, and you have Eastern North Carolina, okay? The Kansas City, okay, Kansas City, their barbecue sauce is a little bit more thick, it's sweeter, okay, it's tangy. Kansas City, their barbecue sauce, they make it a little, little different. Then you have the Alabama white sauce. It's a white barbecue sauce. Now I've seen it on shows. I tried it myself. It wasn't quite for me, but I, I attempted to make it when I was first in culinary school. So maybe I didn't make it right. But anyway, it's a white barbecue sauce, like I said, and the base is mayonnaise, okay? Quite different, quite different. But that's how some of the barbecue sauce in Alabama is. They're from the South, um, as you know, and it can be a little different. Okay, my onions are doing okay. Maybe I've turned it up just a pinch. I'm starting to smell it. Let me add a pinch of salt. There we go. And a pinch of black pepper. Mmm, you want that little that little spice to hit you. Okay, now that these are working. Yeah, looks good. Smells good too. Okay, now making this recipe, this barbecue sauce, it takes two parts. The first part is adding some of these ingredients, well, all of these ingredients together. The whole thing is when you're doing this, especially the first part, you have to watch your stove, you have to watch your sauce because you do not want it to burn. It will start getting thick afterwards, but just be careful. Pay attention to it, I stress that, and stir it occasionally, like every 30 seconds. That's how I did it. Some recipes call for making the barbecue sauce, they say, oh, you can do it in 15 minutes. Me, I let my, the first part of the sauce I'd say I let it run for a good 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour, because I want all of those flavors to come together. The second part, I do that for another 15 minutes when you'll see when I take that and put it into the pot for about 15 minutes, and then I combine them all together at the end, and I let that run for maybe, I would say maybe a good hour, but very, very low flame on your stove. Uh, very low for about an hour and what happens it starts to thicken you'll notice and also when you add the molasses that is going to really really pull it together and at the end of the day what do you have this is barbecue sauce that I made oh I would say a good week or so ago and if you see it's it's thick I used it last night on some chicken, and let me tell you, it was so good. I find that after you make your barbecue sauce, let it sit in the refrigerator, and after a few days, maybe after a week, you're gonna notice that it is getting thicker. And then when you serve it to your family and friends, they're gonna say, oh my goodness, where you get this barbecue sauce from? And you're gonna tell them, I can't tell you. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You can tell them, however, I also would like to stress when you're making this barbecue sauce, the first time it might not come out exactly the way that you want it. And it happened to me. I've tried this about three, four, five, maybe six times until I got it exactly the way that I want it. Okay, so now that I talked enough, let's get started blending all of these together. All right. So I have in a bowl, 
about two tablespoons of vinegar. This is distilled vinegar, okay? Then I need a quarter or rather a half of a lemon. There we go. Do this. There we go. Yes, yes, yes. I hope everybody is doing fine. By the time this airs, hopefully the uh, coronavirus will be gone. Um, just take it easy and remember to wash your hands, um, which will, you know, help and keep you and your family safe, okay? All right. So half of the lemon is approximately a quarter. All right. There we go. Like I said the other time, I love lemon. Otherwise, I would have ate it. Okay, now we have our lemon. Wash my hands, rinse my hands. Oh, I had two of these. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I have my chili sauce. I'm gonna add that. Oh, they look good. This is one cup of chili sauce. Yeah. There we go. Now it is not that hot and the heat is coming up. I'll be in here, you know, I told you before, I'm in here cooking and I'll be sweating up a storm. <laughs> but it's okay because why we like to cook. All right. Now we need some paprika. Okay, we only need approximately, oh, I say a quarter of a teaspoon paprika. You can use regular or you can use smoke. That's up to you. Now this portion is, I'm making this for one, when I made that, um, that batch of barbecue sauce, it was double what I'm doing today because I wanted some to be left over. Mm, they look good. Okay, so we did the paprika. Now we need mustard. And mustard, I use one teaspoon approximately. You could do a little bit more if you like. Oh yeah. That's coming together really good. Okay, then, let me wipe this off. We already have our onion. Let me check. Oh yeah, that's doing good. Okay. We need a, approximately a half a cup of water. That's good. We need a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I said it right. Here we go. Okay. I don't want to stain my table. Um, two tablespoons of dark brown sugar. Come on. There we go. All right. Put that there. All right. So we already added some. Oh, this is looking really good. I'm gonna take this off the burner for a second because I do not want my onions to burn and mess up everything. So, a little bit more of pepper. And look how easy this is. Look how easy this is. Now, the next part, I want to mix. Just, ooh. That smells good. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is what I'm talking about. Let's bring this back. Like I said, you don't want um, you don't want your onions to burn because then you'll be you'll be complaining. Oh my onions burnt. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want that to happen. Okay. Now mixing, some people, like I was doing as demonstration, I was going in a circle. Um, you want to go back and forth because that will help mix it better than just taking it and turning it in a circle. Okay. So now that I did that, I'm going to add this mixture.
right to my pot. Let's get everything in there. And I want to stir this. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. That will um, get it going, okay? Oh, yeah. This is going to be to die for, as Deborah says. One day I'm going to get her over here. She is so busy working. So you can see and meet her. The fabulous, the fabulous. <laughs> Miss Deborah, yes. Okay, mm. Oh yeah, that smells good. Stir that a little bit, wipe my hands. Let's have a little sip of wine. Mm. So good, Domaine Del Riviere, their wine is superb. You will love it and they have had um, write-ups in magazines in California about it. Okay, so that part is done. Let me scrape the rest of this chili sauce in here. Okay, I can put this here. Move this out the way and Continue to stir. I'm gonna turn the, the flame. You hear me? The flame up. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit and just keep stirring for the moment. Now, now I told you that there are two parts to it. We will start working on that after this has start to bubble a little bit when I come back. Stay right where you are. As cool temperatures are upon us, the first thing I think of is soup season and one pot meal. R.L. Schreiber products are the perfect way to start your home style recipes this season. With such a wide selection of concentrated stocks, chili peppers, and flavor-based products, let R.L. Schreiber be the beginning of your end result. Enjoy an afternoon or evening after work at Paulie's Brick House on Restaurant Row in Jersey City Heights. With your selection of specialized pizzas, you can accompany them with a cold beer or even a cocktail. Open daily from 4 p.m. until 2 a.m. with every other Friday featuring live entertainment. Hi, I'm back. Um, I just had to pay attention to this first part of the sauce. Like I mentioned, you have to stir it because if you leave it for maybe two or three minutes, you'll notice it's starting to um, stick to the pot. Okay, now that we got the first part, now we're gonna work on part two. Woo. This is hot because it's starting to smoke. Now we work on part two with a sip of wine. Mmm, so good. Okay, we need ketchup and I'm adding approximately, um, I would say a cup of ketchup. Ooh, now that was hot. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be that hot. So it startled me. Y'all are probably laughing. Yeah, there we go. Let's set this here. Let me turn this down just a pinch. Okay, that part is done. We've already added vinegar to the first part, so we don't necessarily have to add more, but you can, that's left up to you after you make this a couple of times, okay. I'm going to add a little bit more of sugar. Oops, spilling it all over the place, making a mess. Okay, remember, you have to stir because these products will start to stick and burn 
and then you're gonna have to start all over and you'll be mad at yourself and me because <laughs> you'll be saying every day didn't tell me, okay? All right, this is looking really good. Woo, that's nice. That's real nice. Okay, let's my hand, wipe my hands off. Check this because it is bubbling away. Okay. So we have our ketchup in here. And like I said, we have already added vinegar. You can add more if you like. A tablespoon of sugar. Some cayenne pepper. Give it a little kick. Oh dear. So you see it's done in two parts. You want this part to start working while the other is doing its thing. Okay, let's go back. Oh yeah. This is looking good. All right. So for those of you who are tuning in, what we're making today is barbecue sauce from scratch. We've had vinegar, we've had our half a, a quarter cup of lemon juice, which is equivalent to a half of a lemon rolling on a table, makes all the juices come, come to the front. A cup of chili, chili sauce rather, you can make your own chili sauce if you can. We add a three, ta uh, three quarter tablespoons of paprika, and we ordered uh, one tablespoon of mustard. We sauteed a quarter of a cup of onion. We did that earlier in that pot. We add a, let's add a little bit more water. We added water, okay? And Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, um, quarter teaspoon of pepper and when this is put into that pot we are going to add the molasses okay let me check Woo. you see this is what I'm talking about it's starting to to um, stick to the pot so I think I came over here like a minute ago and it smells so good oh my goodness that smells so good. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. And it's starting to get thick. It's on its way. Okay. All right. So we're here. Let's do this. Like I said, for those of you who are just tuning in, it is my version of barbecue sauce and there's a lot of versions out there and they are seemingly all good. As mentioned before, there are Eastern North Carolina um, vinegar based barbecue sauces. There's South Carolina, that's the mustard. There's Texas, that's the mop. They take those big mops and if you go to YouTube, you'll see them. It's called mopping the barbecue sauce, Kansas City. They have the sweet and, and tangy sauces. In Alabama, they have the white uh, barbecue sauce, which is a mayonnaise base. Okay, so here I go again. Oh yeah. Look at this. I guess you can see it. It is bubbling away. I think this has been on here for about a good 10 minutes or so. And like I said, this looks good and it smells so good. So now I'm gonna take this, the second part, and I'm gonna add it to this first pot. Okay, let's get this in here. Let's get all, all of it. I want your barbecue sauce to be a hit this summer, right? Okay. Your friend's gonna say, who made that barbecue sauce? You're gonna say, I did. 
they're going to say, can I have the recipe? And you probably say, uh, how much you paying me for the recipe? I ain't paying you nothing. You're going to give it to you, my cousin. Say, okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> okay, so here we are back. And you see the steam that's coming out of it. That's the vapor is coming out of it. Oh, yeah. That looks good. And of course, I forgot something, a tasting. Just to see what's going on with it. Mm. Mm. Lord, I messed up my jacket. Oh, wow. When you first taste it, it's right at the beginning. And then the flavor is everything gets to the back of your tongue. And you're going to say, oh, my goodness. I think I mentioned in one of the other shows when I taught the soul food class up at Hudson Community College, the continuing ed class. And there was a young boy there with his mother. And he was about 11 years old. And he actually was in there making the barbecue sauce. And I was a little concerned. I said, how are you doing? He says, oh, I'm doing fine. I said, you like it? He goes, yeah, 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 I like it. And he was just tasting and tasting and tasting. The same happened. I taught them the class how to make baked macaroni and cheese. And I went just to, to watch him because he's young. I don't want him to get hurt. And also, um, I taught them how to spatchcock a chicken. So I went over to him and I held the knife and I showed him how to do it. And his mother, she was there just watching and she enjoyed it too. Just to see her son learning how to cook. So I said to him, oh, you like this? Are you going to be a chef one day? He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be a chef. So I thought that was really nice, really nice. Okay, now here we go. Whew, this is good, folks. Now, this part, I'm going to add the molasses. Now, you can let this cook we don't have as much time, but you can let this like simmer on your stove as low as you can get for about before you add the molasses um, or after, it doesn't really matter, for about a half an hour. Some recipes call it 10 minutes and some people, some recipes call it 15 minutes, but I believe the longer you, you take to make it, more of the flavors just gather in it. You, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what you call cooking you don't want to rush your meals mm. and then at the end of the day when this is ready um, you might want to take one of your strainers put it over a pot pour this and just let let it take its time and the, the, um, the onion will stay with it stay in the uh, strainer that's left up to you mine here is half strained so I have some some onion in it which is good all right Molasses, this is just pure molasses and you know molasses is a little sweet and it's thick, but don't worry about it. As you work on your barbecue sauce, that's left up to you to see um, how it tastes, okay? So here we go, see how thick that is? And this is approximately a quarter of a cup. And the molasses is going to turn the barbecue sauce um, dark because, of course, molasses is dark. You know, it's sweet. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Let me move the pot over here so maybe you can see it. Let's move that here. And if you see what I mean, hopefully the camera is catching this. It's turning it dark. Oh, it smells so good. And like I said, after this sits in your mason jar or whatever, it's going to, um, the flavors is really, really going to hit it. Okay. Put this back on. Let me taste again. Be right back. Let's see. Mmm, look at that. It's just getting, it's just thick. Look at that. Mmm. Wow. 
nice. I think I want to add a little lemon, a little more lemon. Yeah. That's that. And you can add um, vinegar if you like. I've made this several times, so my taste buds are um, used to um, the way that I make it. But like I said, try this a few times. This is looking really good. Starting to thicken. Let's add just a little bit more of the molasses. Stir. And now it's getting dark. Okay. Now I will take this and I will put it on the stove and um, let it finish. But first I have to have a sip of Domaine de Riviere. Why? The rosé. Mm. Oh yeah. Now I put some cayenne pepper. I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit more. Cause I like it hot. And then watch after this sits for a few hours, 24 hours or so. And then I pour on the, on the food and I'm saying, whoa, I put a lot of cayenne pepper in here. Yeah. And also what I did, um, you might see a jar sitting here. This is hot honey. What I did, I took some honey, about a good sized jar, put it in the pot. Then I took jalapeno peppers cut them the long way, left a few seeds, put that in the pot with uh, the honey and let it boil for about maybe 10 minutes. And let me tell you, I made some, um, was it, no, it wasn't pancakes. I made some waffles when I did that waffle and chicken show. I poured some of that on there. Let me tell you the sweetness and the hot, oh my goodness. Woo, that was good. Now, this is starting to thicken, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, now, once again, we are working on our barbecue sauce from scratch. And we've added vinegar, we added the lemon, we added the chili sauce here, different chili sauces out there. I got a brand that starts with a letter, you know which one, <laughs> paprika, cayenne pepper, quarter of an onion, sauteed first, um, half a cup of water, Worcestershire sauce, brown sugar, salt, and pepper, and just regular cane sugar. That was the first part. I put that on the stove, let it be on the stove. Um, just a low flame, if you can, for a good half an hour. Then I made the second part in which I used the regular tomato ketchup. Um, I also added, well, I already had added vinegar, so I really didn't need that much more, and the sugar, and you saw me going back and forth with the cayenne pepper. And here it is. Oh, wow, that looks really good. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Barbecue Sauce from Scratch. And we will be right back with... What do you think is coming up with this? That I'm gonna take the barbecue sauce and put on top. It's going to be chicken meatloaf. Yes, chicken meatloaf. There's turkey, there's beef, there's all different types, but today we are doing chicken meatloaf. With a sip of wine. See you in a minute. Don't go nowhere. Hi, and welcome back. Normally, I make meatloaf with turkey because I personally do not eat beef. But I decided one day I'm going to make a chicken meatloaf. Something totally different. Totally different. So, here I am on this nice afternoon 
went to the store, the supermarkets, they're all empty. Stop and shop supermarket is, I mean, not empty with people, but just the shelves are empty. There was no chicken there. The beef is going, uh, the produce and all of that kind of stuff. People, it's, it's like it is, what should I say? Um, Thanksgiving Eve today in Stop and Shop. And today is Saturday. Oh my goodness, what could I tell you? But being that it's Saturday, remember tonight on Comcast, channel 190 in Jersey City, join me to watch my show. It's every Saturday evening, prime time. Comcast, Jersey City, station 190, every Saturday from 8 to 9 p.m. And you can also catch the show in Queens on Verizon, Spectrum, and RCN. And that's every Wednesday from 5 to 6 and Saturday afternoon from 12.30 to 1.30. So we're all over the place and more is coming. All right, so now it's time to get ready and work on this chicken meatloaf, which is going to be the best. You know, that's that. So I have a green pepper, I have red pepper, I have parsley, I have onion, I have a Lipton soup mix, we all know about that, I have mustard, I have sage, and, oh, and how can I forget? I have the roasted garlic pepper, and this one is really good. This is a sweet and smoky rotisserie season from R.L. Schreiber, both of them. This is really good. It's really good. You just sprinkle it on your season, your chicken with it. You can rub it down and then you bake it and it's gonna give you that rotisserie flavor. So see if you can get a hold of this. You can always contact me for this. Okay, let's get started. First, I wanna work on the green pepper, but you know I'm, a, I'm getting to that wine. Don't worry, you know me. All right, so here we go. And let's not waste because it's not a good thing. The people out there who are hungry and they need food and stuff like this, wasted is no good, right? Okay, so I'm using approximately, oh, I say two pounds or two and a half pounds of ground chicken. And with that, I don't want to put too much seasoning because then I could ruin it, ruin it, okay? So here we go. That's, I can overdo it, in other words, with um, too much. And then when we get to eat it, all you're going to taste is green pepper and red pepper, and we don't want that to happen, right? You can say, Renee, what happened to you? You know what I'm talking about. As you can see, I'm always in a happy mood. There's nothing wrong with that. You have to enjoy life. Enjoy it. Okay. Yeah. This is it. Wow. Okay. So I think that's a good amount for this. Let's put it here. And do this. Okay. This is my green pepper. But first, I need a glass of wine. Y'all probably say, there goes Renee with that wine again. Okay, that's all right. I'm sure when you cook, you also have wine or beer or a cocktail, whatever is your fancy um, to help you enjoy what you're doing. You might have music playing in the background. As you notice, you hear music here on the show. Mm. Oh, that's really good. Domaine Del Riviere. This is the 2018 Rosé. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. I got the green pepper. Let's cut off the top of the red pepper. Doesn't this remind you of something? Remember when we did the stuffed peppers? Wasn't that good? Oh my God. I had a ball doing that. Mm. That was really good. I think I did it vegan style. I don't remember, but if not, I'm going to do vegan style. So y'all could be included because <laughs> most of the food 
it's not vegan. And there are a lot of vegan lovers out there. And I will eat vegan food. I don't have a problem. To me, it is really good. Really good. Okay. Here we go with the red pepper. Let's do this. Wipe my hands. I'm telling you. Okay, what do we have next? Well, we have our ground chicken here, but I want to cut up a little parsley because I'm going to add that to the mix. To the mix, like you're mixing records, right? Some of you know me for a long time. I used to be a DJ years ago, and it was at a club in New York on 19th Street, and it was called The Inferno. And those were the days. I was the head DJ, well, the only DJ there, and Kenny Carpenter, he was the light guy. And uh, I played at Studio 54, the warehouse in the Bronx, BLS during Frankie Crocker time, and who else? Oh, and KTU during Paco time. Those were the good old days. You, some of you folks who know that music was jumping and we're still listening to the same music today. Like Chaka Khan, you know what I mean? And I want to thank you. You remember that one? I want to thank you, Heavenly Father. Yeah. That was the little after that two tons of fun. Just us. See, I'm, I'm taking you back to the music. Maybe one day if I get the licensing, I can play some of that music while the show is going. And that will get you going. You'll be in there. Oh, I want to thank you. <laughs> Let me stop. You all probably say we ain't crazy. All right. So I have that. Next, I want to add some. Oop, I'm going to knock the table down. I want to add some, <laughs> some garlic. Nothing wrong with fresh garlic, right? Let's put that here. Let me clean. You know what? Missing something. I'll just use this. Just to clean off my workspace. When we was in culinary school, if we didn't clean it off, you know, the, the chef would get on our case. What are you doing working on a dirty board? Clean it up. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't screaming and hollering like you see at the restaurants because we were students and we were learning. So we had a little break every once in a while, right? Okay, look at that. There it goes. I think I put a little bit more garlic because we do love garlic here at home. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's sort of like mince this. Right? Oh, what's that? <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm enjoying my day today. I really am. This is a good day. And I hope you're enjoying yours too. The best that we can because of the coronavirus and I don't know, it's just a bad thing, you know. Too many people are passing from it. Okay, so I got that. Let's clean this off a little. We don't need that. Wipe my hands. Okay, next ground chicken. I was getting ready to say ground turkey because I'm so used to it. Okay, so we have all our seasonings. Now the next step is just to add to it, okay? After a sip of wine. Mmm, so good. All right, so let's start. We're going to add our green pepper and red pepper. Nice color, really nice color. Okay, now I left some in here just in case we want to add a little bit more. And you can tell after you mix it all together, is that what you need? Green pepper, red pepper, some parsley. We have to have parsley. And then we're going to add the garlic, which I love. Mm. Have you ever had um, garlic mashed potatoes? That's the best. Garlic mashed potatoes. All right. Next, this is the roasted garlic pepper. 
just a little in the ham. Oop, I don't want to overdo it now. Okay, squeeze in between the fingers, getting the oils out of it, let it pop a little. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Mm. Whew. Oh, I can smell it, almost gonna make me sneeze. It's so powerful. Now, this is the roasted and smoky rotisserie. We're gonna add that. And look at the color on that. Look at that. Oh my goodness, this is the best. Oh yeah. I don't wanna overdo it, so. There we go. <laughs> I know I'm crazy. Okay, so we have all of this. Next, I wanna add the soup mix. This is an onion soup mix. And what I do, I sort of break it up with my fingers. And then, ba-bam. Bam, there you go. All right. Next is mustard. I'm just gonna add just a little mustard. Just, that's a good, almost two tablespoons of mustard. All right. I wanna get my fingers in there and really, really mix that chicken and the seasonings together the way they're supposed to be done. Spatula is good, but you know, we want to, you know, we, we at home, we want to really get this going. Okay, so let me set this aside. Crack the egg. Let's do this. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Let me just do this a little. Get that in there. Look at that. Now I want to get in here and mix all of this together. I mean, really good. We don't want to overdo it. Just so you can see the seasonings. Yeah. Oh boy. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Mm, you see that? You can see the parsley. Here's a little, just a pinch of salt. Come on. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Mm hmm. Okay, it's coming. Now I'm add a little bit of sage in here. Some ground sage. Mm. Who's coming by to eat? <laughs> like I said before, nobody knows I'm doing this. Otherwise, Deborah would be here. You know, she would be here. She said, Renee, I'm coming around the corner. I'm going to get my mimosa. And I want you to put on some house music, a little bit more uh, parsley. I want you to put on some house music because we are going to throw down. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Every time, okay, come on by. And I have my bottle of wine. Then we get in here, start to talking and et cetera, et cetera. And it's so much fun. Okay. So this is looking really good. I know I said don't overmix, but it looked like I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, you're not, you're not doing what you preach. <laughs> you're doing the opposite. Okay, I think we're good with this now. All right. So now that this is ready, put this on the side. And I have my pan. Let's take this off. And I'm using my handy cast iron. It is the best for cooking. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil to the bottom. There we go. I can take this. Instead of taking my hand, 
and put in there, even though they are clean. Just the bottom. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna take this and get that chicken in there. Oh my goodness, look at that. Ooh, wow, this looks really good. Yeah. Oh, look at the seasoning on it. Oh, boy, oh boy. Wow. Can you see this? Look at that. Look at that. That's good. Yeah. You can make some sandwiches out of it later on. And remember, at the beginning of the show, I made that barbecue sauce. So we're going to take that. We're going to slice this and put the barbecue sauce on top. And we're going to throw down. You're going to say, Renee, where you live? I'm coming by for some of that. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm good with that. My oven. At 350 degrees until the internal temperature is 160 degrees. And then you should be good to go. It should be ready to, to eat. Um, then we have another sip of wine. Mm. And when I come back, we will slice into this chicken meatloaf and the barbecue sauce we're gonna place on top. And we will be ready to throw down, have like little sandwiches here and there, you know, however you wanna, you know, and enjoy your chicken. But we have everything. Thank you. See you in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Hi, I'm back. And we are ready to throw down. Earlier, I made some barbecue sauce from scratch. You have the recipe. Do not be afraid to make it two, three, four times because it takes a little while to get the hang of it and for your, your, your palate, the way that you like it. I make it the way that I like it. I have mild and I have spicy, okay? So we have a chicken meatloaf. We have our wine, Domaine de la Riviere. And this is the rosé. This is a 2018. And I'll have a sip of this as you have yours. Mmm, here's to you. Mmm. So good. Okay, let me get the chicken meatloaf. Oh yes, look at that. That is simply beautiful. And I brought the temperature, let me get this. I brought the temperature up to 165 degrees, which you should do whenever you are cooking chicken, 165 degrees. Um, some people bring it to maybe 160 degrees, you need to take it out. And then, of course, it just starts to move up. Okay. So, let me see now if I can grab this meatloaf out and put it on our... Ah, perfect. Right onto the... Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Okay. Let me move this cast iron out the way. Oh, look at this. Simply beautiful. Mm, 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 mm. I am ready. I hope you are too. Just ring the bell. You know the apartment. <laughs> okay, let me do a couple of slices here. Wow. What'd you say? Don't be so stingy on the slices. <laughs> okay, I'll make it a little bigger. Here we go again. Mmm. And again, oh, the knife just, just goes right through it. Look at that. You can see, you can see all the spices inside of it. It is fully cooked. 
So the next step, I'm going to add just a little more of the barbecue sauce that we created today. Oh my goodness. This is barbecue chicken <laughs> at its best. Yes. Mm. Wow. Very, very good. A little here, a little there. Mm, mm, mm. This is home cooking. This is not restaurant meals. This is home cooking. Another sip of wine. And thank you again for coming to In the Kitchen with Chef Renee Hewitt. Until next time. Come to Hudson County Community College for courses that transfer to four-year schools and provide credentials for in-demand careers. They're the newest technologies and facilities anywhere and caring professors and staff to help me succeed. A great education and full campus life. All for a fraction of the cost of most four-year schools. Hudson County Community College. Close to home. Affordable. High quality. Life-changing. Register now. As cool temperatures are upon us, the first thing I think of is soup season and one pot meal. R.L. Schreiber products are the perfect way to start your home style recipes this season. With such a wide selection of concentrated stocks, chili peppers, and flavor-based products, let R.L. Schreiber be the beginning of your end result. Enjoy an afternoon or evening after work at Paulie's Brick House on Restaurant Row in Jersey City Heights. With your selection of specialized pizzas, you can accompany them with a cold beer or even a cocktail. Open daily from 4 p.m. until 2 a.m. with every other Friday featuring live entertainment.